you can't even count the number of tigers that we're now seeing in one enclosure. You know, these animals are being kept for no other reason than um, a, a commercial gain to, to him, really. You, you don't have to be an animal expert or a welfare expert to see how many different kinds of wrong this is. So, hi, I'm Giles Clark. Um, and I've worked now with big cats for over 20 years. And my current role is the director of big cats and conservation at the Big Cat Sanctuary, which is based in Kent in the UK. Oh, little girl. Immediately looking at some of these cats, you can tell, well, some of them are not even natural species. You know, you've got the most obese looking liger or tigon, which is a cross between, as its name suggests, a lion and a tiger or a tiger and a lion, depending on which um, one is the, the mother and the father. But, you know, they're, they're hugely obese. They're highly inbred. They're highly crossbred. They are not healthy. They will be susceptible to all sorts of um, health problems. Yeah, yeah. Now, this, this to me, this particular clip has, is is a, a particular low point in the entire series. So we've got a female tiger that's clearly giving birth, and they are they're fishing out the cub from the den. It, it's moments old, with a metal hook and pole, dragging it across the ground and then pulling it through effectively the mesh. And I, I you know, you know, how can you put this into words really? You, you don't have to be an animal expert or a welfare expert to see how many different kinds of wrong this is. But then to immediately show the cubs just a few days after now, their eyes are starting to open and he's complaining about how much noise they're making and how much hard work it is, is, is just beyond. Like, look at the, look how helpless these cubs are, you know, and imagine what that mother has to go through. She is literally just a, a breeding machine. And that's reinforced by the very next clip. You can't even count the number of tigers that we're now seeing in one enclosure. And so, it, again, it just completely reinforces that, you know, these animals are being kept for no other reason than um, a, a commercial gain to, to him, really. So this next clip with uh, Doc Antle. So I'm Dr. Bhagavan Antle, B-H-A-G-A-V-A-N, Antle, A-N-T-L-E, Dr. Bhagavan Antle. You know, again, immediately, within a few seconds, the opening clip of is him coming in riding an elephant. You know, riding elephants now for years has definitely been pointed out as not the way to go in terms of looking after animals such as elephants, for example, in good zoos and in good institutes. Three thirty nine is the start price, right? There's people that paid six twenty five six fifty five for their tours today. You know, because it's dynamic price like an airline ticket, that the price goes up according to how many people are coming on. The one thing we know is that conservation work needs funding. And the astronomical amounts of money that are being paid for people to have these encounters, imagine if you could apply that to supporting in situ work where, you know, conservation work is happening at the coalface in these ecosystems where we're trying to protect these animals. It's not about banning all animals in captivity. It's not about stopping all zoos. There are good zoos, good facilities, and good institutes that are doing really good things to support species and to support conservation. Don't go along to places such as Joe Exotics, Roadside Zoo, you know, like it's about going along to places that are doing good work and supporting real conservation. I feel the way in which it was produced, so the, the directors or the production company have really missed an opportunity 
you know, and so many of these species are now critically endangered in the wild. And, and the spectacle becomes about the individual characters. It's more like some weird docu-soap about the individual people rather than what should be the issues.